throughout the history of the building of the Canadian West. Nothing comparable has come into existence. It seems to rise up from the very rocks around it. Like a castle carved from the surrounding peaks. There is elegance within. An unforgettable wilderness without. at the heart of Canada's first national park lies the legend of the Banff Springs. Surrounded by rock, and born amid the rocky conflicts of a newly founded Canada. A nation overshadowed by a powerful American neighbor. Struggling to avoid its long-term expansion plan. In 1871, a nervous four-year-old Canada offered British Columbia a transcontinental railway if it would join its fledgling confederation. The seeds were planted. A decade later, Canadian Pacific Railway was born. Ironically, with an American, William Cornelius Van Horn, as general manager. These were critical times. Canada desperately needed a railway from sea to sea in order to consolidate its union. Besides, only two years before, in 1869, the Americans had succeeded in building just that. It was now up to Canada to respond. November 7th, 1885. The last spike of the Canadian Pacific Railway was driven at Craig Gallaghy, British Columbia. No one was smiling, including Van Horn. The cost of the undertaking had been overwhelming in dollars, in cents, and in human lives. And then there was the matter of the railway line. Many thought the tracks were put down in the wrong place. Fearing that the Americans would build spur lines in the Canadian territory, the Canadian Pacific felt compelled to build its line via the southern route. A route plagued by steep grades. in winter avalanches. In order to pay for the maintenance of its line in the west, the railway quickly developed an agricultural economy on the Canadian prairies. By 1883, an entire European industrial culture had been imported to the prairies via the expanded railway lines, changing the face of the Canadian west forever. soon realized that the transport of freight alone could not sustain the economy of the new Continental Railway. An innovative and potentially lucrative venture was created. Tourism 
in the now accessible Western Canadian wilderness. In 1885, the Canadian Pacific Railway lobbied the government to create Canada's first national park at the hot springs on Sulphur Mountain to create public land for Canadians and their visitors to enjoy forever. Canadian Pacific quickly recognized the potential of the hot springs, making them the foundation of its Western tourism empire. In the late 19th century, the taking of the waters was all the rage among the well-heeled in Europe and eastern North America. Naturally, the allure of the curative powers of these waters in the wilds of Canada could only be considered all the more appealing. To complement the hot springs, Van Horn proposed something equally appealing and unprecedented one of the largest and most elegant hotels in North America to be constructed within Canada's first national park. In so doing, Van Horn planted the seed for the creation of Canadian Pacific's Grand Railway Hotels and became its first president. Since we can't export the scenery, he observed, we'll have to import the tourists. Hotel construction began in 1886. But when Van Horn arrived in Banff the following summer, he found that the rapidly rising hotel had been turned around 180 degrees from what the original plans had called for. He was not amused. Have you not noticed that you've turned the damn hotel around and gave the million dollar view of the Bow Valley to the kitchen staff? Since you don't know what the hell you're doing, I'm going to tell you exactly what I want. He instructed the construction foreman to build a rotunda and give the view back to the paying guests. As the hotel was being built, so too was the town of Banff. In 1886, Dominion Land Surveyor George Stewart became the first superintendent of what is now Banff National Park. Part of his job was to build a town on the banks of the Bow River. From that point forward, the futures of the town, the park, and the hotel were intrinsically linked. The Bam Springs Hotel was completed in the summer of 1888. Built entirely of wood and at an unprecedented cost of $250,000, the hotel offered a full five stories of elegance, accommodating up to 300 guests. At $3.50 a night, this was luxury. Van Horn's dream of a castle in the Rockies was now a reality. In 1890, Banff's Northwest Mounted Police Detachment was expanded because of a requirement for the Mounties to enforce new National Park regulations. It was here at the hotel that the Mounties became a symbol of the orderly charm of this wild country. 